Hi everybody, this is uh, Paul from Zosa Games. In this video I want to provide you with a quick rundown on how the combat rules work as they appear in the rules book. If you're using the Hostile Solo book uh, for solo role playing then you should find that a lot of this uh, fits that book as well, although in solo uh, the rules are a lot more cut down, uh, more streamlined. Let's start with a quick overview of the combat chapter uh, and the sections that it contains. It starts on page 88 and uh, it begins with range bands. Now range bands are a feature of traveller related games that go back all the way to uh, the classic version in 1977. Uh, you can see here the range bands used. Uh, it's close and extended, there for hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then there's short, medium, long, very long and distant. And these are all used with uh, gun combat. The entire combat system is based on these range bands. So a pistol is generally short range, an SMG or assault rifle is generally medium range, a rifle long range and so on. Uh, so it's like a shorthand that, that makes speeds up uh, combat a little bit. Like most tasks uh, in Hostile, you roll uh, 8 or over on 2d6 to hit a target. So that's the, the, the baseline, the simple baseline. Uh, but that's if it's at the weapon's range band or closer. Uh, for every range band the target exceeds your weapon, you increase the difficulty of the roll by one level. So from average, it goes up to difficult, from difficult to very difficult. So each time it gets more difficult, it's uh, a minus two or a minus four. <coughs> so as an example, your pistol is a short range weapon. And if your target is at long range, uh, let's say... 80 meters away, then that's two range bands further than short range. And that increases the difficulty by two steps from average, which is eight or over, to very difficult, which is 12 or over. So that's an unlikely shot, but a realistic shot, I think. So these pages in this uh, chapter cover initiative in combat, which is who sees who first. And uh, you can see here's the the order of combat. Uh, to briefly summarize this system, the side which sees its enemy first gets to attack first, followed by the other side. So not in individual characters, but the two sides, the opposing sides in the any, any conflict. During an attack, uh, if you look here on page 92, you can see uh, that a melee or, or a hand-to-hand -hand attack will always go first, followed by the gunfire. Uh, and any other actions take place after that. I've been asked about this uh, a few times. If you attack an opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat, then you force your opponent to defend themselves and they forfeit their action in this combat round by, by uh, fighting with you. Uh, this is why we have melee combat occurring before gunfire. So if you turn a corner in a trench uh, with a bayonet on your rifle, a new bump into an enemy soldier at close range, that's hand-to-hand -hand combat range, you uh, you get to use that bayonet uh, and you force the unfortunate opponent to react and defend himself in melee combat with whatever he has to hand, uh, rather than lift up his rifle and shoot you dead in a gun duel. It's that kind of, I haven't got time to grab my gun, we're too close, the, the range is too close. Uh, and that's the that's what this rule is intended to uh, to recreate. Uh, talking of melee combat, that's the the next section, and again it's a flat eight or over to hit an opponent with your fists or a fire axe or a wrench, uh, and there are various die modifiers here uh, to factor in, uh, and your opponent gets to strike back using the very same rules. Uh, now uh, let's look at page ninety four. This is uh, gunfire, or aimed fire as we call it. Uh, here's the range bands again, and you can see that to hit score, 8 or over, uh, and there's a whole table of dice modifiers. This is sort of the heart, really. It's 8 or over to hit, based on these modifiers here. So you've got sort of target, he's firing from cover, then you'll get a minus 3 to hit that person. If you're aiming for a full round in uninterrupted, you get a plus 1. If you're firing at point blank range, I think that's 3 metres, you get a plus 2 and various other ones there you can see. Two of the biggest factors in my opinion are uh, the target being in cover behind some solid obstacle and just leaning out to fire at the character and uh, this section just here 
it's auto fire. So plenty of guns in hostile are capable of auto fire, and we handle this in a very very simple method, uh, very re reminiscent of the old uh, classic traveller rules. A four round burst gets you not one attack but two attacks, and a ten round burst gets you three attacks. That's three rolls. And you can direct these attacks or rolls as you wish, so all onto one opponent or any targets that are adjacent. So your 10 round burst from a, an assault rifle could be translated uh, as three attacks on one target or if he has two comrades close by, we're talking almost within touching distance, uh, one attack on each of them. Or you can allocate these attacks as you wish, so two on one man, the third attack on another, uh, or whatever, you know. Um, there are rules for other situations as well, um, as you can see here. But I think this is page 96 and onwards. But I think before I play through an example, I'll just have a look at the injury and recovery rules. These are back here, 101, page 103. So what happens when you get shot or stabbed? There are no hit points in hostile. A pistol, for example, will inflict between three and 13 points of damage. And these are subtracted directly from your player character's attributes or characteristics, that is endurance and then either strength or dexterity. So as you suffer damage, your characteristics go down, so you you become weaker, slower. Uh, it's an elegant system that goes all the way back. It's, uh, it's part of, this is a fundamental part of Traveller. So imagine a colonial marshal, he's got strength, dexterity and endurance, all seven. He's been shot for nine points of damage. The damage is first subtracted from um, endurance, which is immediately lowered to zero. He's now knocked down and stunned for a round and suffers an injury. Uh, his end endurance is now zero and the remaining two points of damage are subtracted from either, either strength or dexterity. Uh, we decide to lower his strength by two. So now his strength is 5, his dexterity is still 7, and endurance is 0. What if that second characteristic was also reduced to 0? Then that character will be severely injured. Here on page 103 you can see that two characteristics, 0, means the character is seriously wounded. And from now on they must roll endurance every hour or deteriorate to the point of death. So this is quite a brutal combat system. If uh, armour's worn, and that includes things like vac suits, uh, you know, space suits, then that armour will reduce the damage inflicted on the character before it starts reducing those vital characteristics. A space suit reduces any incoming damage by, I think it's four, four points, for example. So that's combat in a nutshell. So let's look now at an example of play. Okay, so this is our map. As you can see, it's uh, the cargo deck of a small space station. We'll imagine that this station has been taken over by a gang of criminals, uh, die-hard style. Our hero is a lone marshal trying to retake the station. So, let's look at the situation here. We, uh, we have the marshal quietly searching the corridors and he peers into the cargo bay. This cargo bay here from where he can hear two of the hijackers arguing. Here's their att attributes, we've got hi hijacker 1, hijacker 2. And as you can see, they're stood up just behind a few waist-high cargo boxes. We should begin with initiative, but I think the situation as described gives the marshal the initiative, so I don't think there's any use here in rolling dice to work out what the range is. We can see the range uh, the situation tells us that the marshal will hear the voices first, he will get the drop, he will see them, they probably won't, probably won't see him. So our marshal gets to act uh, freely for a combat round. He's going to use his red oak pistol and he's going to fire a four round burst at the hijackers. Uh, we can see that on this chart here, on the, the map here, there's roughly six or seven squares. He moves up to the, to the doorway there and leans against the wall for cover. There's around six or seven squares 
range and at 1.5 meters per square that's around 10 meters range so that is that's easily in the short range there um, referring to the modifiers table on page 95 we can see that the marshal receives no penalty for range because the pistol is a short range weapon he's free to aim for one round because they don't know he's there so he can aim for a round that gives him a plus one his targets are partly covered by the crates it's not full cover they're not hiding behind them but they're partly covered so let's say that gives the marshal a, a minus one it's got a plus one and a minus one uh, and the four round burst allows the marshal to have a second attack on hijacker number two so two bursts one on hijacker number one one on hijacker number two let's not forget um, the marshal's gun combat one skill uh, giving him another plus one so in total he has a plus one a minus one and another plus one for a final modifier of plus one so the attack roll is eight or over as always we roll for the attack uh, on hijacker one and we roll a seven add the one is an eight so it's a hit so hijacker one is hit by gunfire now we roll against hijacker number two uh, we roll a five add the one that's a six now that's a miss hijacker two isn't hit so neither are wearing any armor so when we roll the red hawks damage dice of 2d6 plus one we get nine points uh, that are going to be subtracted from hijacker one's endurance of six this reduces it to zero and the three remaining points we decide to take from his strength leaving him with strength three dexterity six and endurance zero now looking at the damage results table on page 103 we can see that uh, he is injured and stunned for one round uh, we'll roll 1d6 for more information uh, four so he's hitting the arm the referee describes how the hijacker is hit and cries out he falls back out of sight behind the cargo crates of course the marshals player in the game shouldn't really be told the exact details of the injury uh, inflicted because uh, he, he wouldn't know would he uh, he'd just be told that uh, the guy's hit falls down it could be seriously wounded dead the marshal won't know so what happens in the second combat round so now the uh, hijackers are aware they get to act but because our marshal uh, gained the initiative he, he saw the opponents first he gets to act first this round um, our marshal will fire another four round burst in an attempt to hit hijacker number two um, this time he's going to direct both of his attacks on the one man so that's two chances to hit uh, as a referee although the marshal has surprise and he will go first i will rule here that the hijacker can easily get into cover to return fire uh, with his shotgun when it's his turn he's standing right behind this metal cargo box after all all he has to do is crouch he doesn't have to dive into cover or look around for cover so we check the modifier table again um, to hit the second hijacker still no range penalty uh, there's no bonus for spending a round aiming this time he, he can't do that he's been seen he's going to fire immediately he gets a still gets a plus one for his combat skill and he's going to get a minus three this time because the target is firing from the cover of the crate well, sort of leading behind it shotgun on top of the crate that's what he's going to do so this gives the marshal a final down modifier of minus two so that's not so great but he does have two chances to hit for the two pistol attacks we roll once we get three take away two that's a one so i miss and we roll a seven take away two is a five so that's another miss so the uh, this shot fired by the marshal both attacks miss the bullets ricochet off the metallic crates as the hijacker le uh, leans out to blast the marshal with his shotgun now it's the hijacker's turn so hijacker number one is stunned for this round still and he's going to be out of sight on the deck clutching his arm while hijacker number two fires his shotgun at the marshal so back to the modifiers table the, uh, the shotgun is a short range weapon so again no penalty but there is a plus one bonus for the shotgun at that range 
The hijacker also has gun combat one. Uh, and since the marshal is using the, the door frame as cover, as we discussed earlier, the hijacker receives uh, a minus three penalty. So that adds up for the hijacker to a minus one penalty. We roll for the hijacker. Ten. Take away one. That's a nine. That's a hit against the marshal. At this close range, if we look at this modifier table again, at this close range, the uh, shotgun does 4d6 damage. As you can see on the table here, uh, the shotgun damage varies with uh, the range from the target, with the shotgun sh sh uh, shot spreading out um, as, it, as it moves. So at this range, 4d6 damage. And we roll 12 points. So that's uh, that's quite nasty. That we uh, we're going to apply two modifiers to this damage roll before we uh, take it to the characteristics. We subtract a few points based on the victim's armor value, if he's wearing any armor, and we add points if we exceed the attack roll of eight or over. Now the hijacker did exceed the attack roll by one point. He rolled a nine, and he only did an eight. So I consider also well and. It, We'll, we'll factor that in. And I consider that, that the marshal was wearing a ballistic uh, vest, which armor value of 5. So the damage of 12 is modified to 12. Add the 1 for the uh, rolling over. That's the, called the effect. I take away 5 for the ballistic vest. So that's an 8 point damage. So these 8 points immediately reduce his endurance to 0, with no uh, non moving on to strength or dexterity. 0 endurance. So like the hijacker, he's injured and stunned for one round. Again, we're going to roll 1d6 for more details to find out uh, uh, a little bit more about the injury. And we roll and find out that he's knocked down and stunned for a further three combat rounds. So he's temporarily out of the fight. Um, although the referee, or would be me, I think I would rule the shotgun shots, hit him directly in the chest so on his on his uh, ballistic vest so he's bruised maybe has a broken rib but i don't consider that he would be bleeding there unfortunately for the marshal that's easily enough time for the hijacker who's uh, got the shotgun is still around and awake and also number one who's is, will be on his feet by now to walk around in the next round round three uh, kick away the red hawk and uh, capture the marshal so we'll come round after a couple of rounds, and he'll be now a prisoner of the uh, of the hijackers. So our, our marshal is thrown into a room with a dozen other hostages, all station staff. One of them, uh, let's say, is a paramedic, and hijacker one insists that she takes a look at his arm. Uh, let's say she has a medical two rating. So page one hundred four tells us about wound recovery, medical treatment. There, look. Uh, being reduced to zero, endurance is classed as not seriously wounded. Um, for characters who are not seriously wounded, uh, injured, apply first aid with a successful average medical roll. And this restores a number of characteristic points equal to twice the effect of the roll. Points restored by first aid are divided as desired amongst all the damaged physical characteristics. Uh, first aid must be applied within five minutes of the injuries being received to be fully effective. If not, the... the uh, the points given are uh, reduced slightly there. Okay, well, we'll try that. Let's uh, roll for a treatment of the hijacker's arm. So she rolls two dice, six. We had a skill of two, that's an eight. So that is a success, but you'll notice there there's no effect. There's no, she rolled exactly what she needed, not over. So there's no excess points for us to double to create, to, 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 to reduce the, the damage done to his arm. So the referee, I would rule that she puts his arm in a sling, stops any bleeding, uh, patches him up kind of thing, but his uh, his characteristics, his endurance stays the same for now until he begins to heal. Uh, now she attends to the marshal and she rolls 11. That's a great roll. There's an effect of three on there, so she rolled three more than she needed to. That's three excess points, which we double and use to restore the marshal's endurance from zero up to six. Not quite uh, restored in full, but it feels much better for that. And we can rule that he has to, to receive this benefit. He has to remove the, uh, the tactical vest he's wearing uh, to get the recovery points. Uh, and the player, I'm sure, would agree with that. 
So medical roles like this can be failed. You can fail a first aid role. And that just means that the injury was cleaned up and bandaged, uh, but no characteristic points were recovered. And is the, the, the victim would still need uh, a successful first aid role uh, later that day or the next day to then begin regaining some characteristic points just from natural healing. Uh, I mean, the hijacker that she uh, she attended to, she didn't recover any points, but the role was successful. So immediately from, from that point onwards, that hijacker will start recovering points uh, naturally. That's page uh, 105 there. Any character who has received first sexual first aid and no more than one characteristic but zero can begin healing naturally. Okay, so resting, three points plus whatever endurance down modifier you've got. So that's quite a lot, so that would uh, kick in as soon as you receive a successful first aid roll. Alright, well, I think I've covered enough there for one video. Uh, I hope you found this run through useful. I'll create a second follow up video uh, on combat that will go into sort of melee combat and sort of how that relates to com gun combat as well. We'll put the two together. And at this time, we'll even look at Hostile's unique area fire rules. Right, until next time, this is Paul from Zosa Games.